Good evening, folks. This is a graphic of a number of climate engineering options, certainly not all that exist, and it comes from a new research paper coming out in print on October 1st, but available online now. The graphic does a good job representing the span of layer options, from geothermal to oceanic, surface, atmosphere, and space-based options. A bit of a personal note, I like virtually none of these options or others in the realm of messing with nature, especially those ones up there in the atmosphere. And indeed, using a three-step approach, these authors find themselves on much of the same plane. Their arguments are against climate engineering, shortened to CE in the portion of text visible here, advocating a new version of the trade-off argument against geoengineering. They do find one acceptable form of that engineering, and that is afforestation, which is the real bottom line of the paper, that afforestation is the only okay option for climate engineering, with the opposition to all of the rest implied as well. The paper also makes note of the increasingly powerful opposition to geoengineering as a whole, a fact which is definitively driven in part by the resistance of the online community. So, you may have missed this one hiding over there on the left side of the graphic, and you can probably guess at a close approximation of what afforestation is. But it does merit a separation from reforestation in your mind. Reforestation is the enhancement of diminishing forests with native species. Aforestation is the complete transformation of barren land into forests of species chosen to be best suited there. Reforestation is somehow not considered climate engineering, probably should be, and it would fall into that same category as afforestation. On its face, it's hard to find too many problems with creating forest regions. Now, from the perspective of simply undoing what we have done, afforestation and reforestation have CO2 mitigation in their rearview mirror. No doubt we have changed that profile on Earth, but there are considerable suspicions of its efficacy given the high cost of implementation and probable lower than expected returns due to the fact that CO2 is not as big a factor in climate change as the 93% blame it currently holds. So combined with the anti-climate engineering stance, the promotion of forests here makes for a nice, neat little happy package of a paper for this community. And in the regards I've just mentioned, there is no doubt that it is. So now, let us examine the basis of the argument against geoengineering. In this case, it is wholly against the degrowth perspective and economic paradigm, which is currently seen as one of the huge, front-running mainstream ideas to combat human problems and achieve sustainability. Reducing waste is great. Efficiency is exceptional. However, you must not operate in the truth-seeking world without the word sustainability triggering in your mind things like Agenda 21. These ultra-control efforts are veiled under the conceptually flawless idea of sustainability, which, by itself, isn't a bad idea. And there is absolutely no reason to consider that these authors are part of some conspiracy or anything other than interested in the environment and are taking the side against climate engineering. There are, of course, as many arguments, issues, and potential disasters involved in an Agenda 21-like future scenario as there are involved in those where humans spray the skies and skew the oceanic pH. All in all, one must recognize that we have run into not only an anti-clean argument against geoengineering, but also one of philosophy, since the environmental paradigm is to do less to nature, not more, which is why the forest flavors are favored here, with good reason. Agenda 21 and geoengineering have found themselves way down their winding roads and are now staring each other in the face. See you in the morning for the daily update. Be safe, everyone.